just so you don't think that every book is the same, previous book had the uh, orcs on uh, the intro screen, this one has Arthas, but it's not meant only as Arthas. It's, it's meant to uh, symbolize what the book is about, right? So, uh, every one of these books also has an introduction, I forgot to say that. I don't always show it because, because, because it shows, it, it's only like an intro. If you ever watch anime, and I don't, but I know someone who does, there's always like an intro, and the intro doesn't tell you much, but it's there. Anyway, let's look into, let's look into the Wanderer's Journal, which is the place where you acquire, where you acquire upgrades. I mean, out of the campaign upgrades, such as more gold per more gold gathered, that's the word I've been looking for. Alright. Yeah, yeah, I know that much. Alright, so there it shows how many fragments of journal of each you gathered. And here's a bunch of uh, characters you can interact with. There's Mi Mizuki, which shows you... Affliction? I think so. It's just, it signifies how much a certain character likes the side quests you have done, or something like that. And you can see, pretty much everyone is happy except Kasumi, but Kasumi is... is... Uh, someone who was hostile towards the characters I had, so I don't care about her much. Uh, with Zeal you can reset uh, your choices in the journals. With... Uh, Kelfuzad, you can... Uh, View... Uh, you can view some of the artworks, right? They're different for each book. And with Sokram, you can exit and get back into the campaign. So let's have a look. So, uh, these are the upgrades I can pick. There's these two... there are two for every tier. Weapon... Gold gathering... And extra supplies. Damage, attack speed, and I think I'm gonna maybe try Zerglings this time. Damage, attack range, um, health. There we go. And after doing that, you just gotta save the entries. That means this gets saved, and then you just exit the shop. The system saves, and you can get on to doing the first mission. Or I mean the first intro, which I do want to skip because there's usually not any talking in it. It's just a cinematic show, but let's see if there's any talking to this one. By the way, this campaign doesn't come... I mean... Wonders of Sorcery is from campaign creations, not from Hive Workshop, but I guess you realize that yet. Uh, I guess you've realized that, so... The Wanderer is called the Sorcery, and this were once working toward a single goal, separated, entering into a conflict much greater than that confined to any kingdom that exists in this world. I think this is a Zorbia, by the way. For now, your humble servant would like to review the previous events. From there, we can have a better perspective. The Kingdom of Azorbia, the home grounds for the Tran Paladins, the starting location of Hikaru the Lightbringer. After disagreement with his superior, Hikaru left to wander the world. He eventually wandered into the Duchy of Artesia, which was besieged by the newly discovered army of the dead from Arcadia. Recruited by trusted companions Joan and Nekorov, Ikaru then journeyed to the source of the problem, Arcadia. This is showing the kingdoms, by the way, I think. Here, Hikaru met his estranged sister, Shizuka, the host of the fallen god of death known as Deathclaw. After numerous clashes, Hikaru succeeded in releasing the imprisoned goddess, Arcadia but unknowingly fell right into her plans. Forging an alliance with his former enemies, 
a car when Shizuka traveled east to the untamed forest continent seeking to claim artifacts of power by which to challenge the might of the goddess. Securing the aid of the local population, this band of sorcerians sought out and discovered the Tower of Gods, a place of immense power. There Hikaru discovered the Garantine, one of four swords set to show the way to the fabled Lost City. With, it, with new weapons and artifacts in hand, Hikaru led his fellow sorcerians back to Arcadia where, with the help of the Nerubians of Koron Nerub, he succeeded in defeating the goddess Arcadia. However, their alliance was not meant to last. The Nerubians, freed from oppression, inherited the army of the dead and declared war on all surrounding kingdoms. The underground satyr fled north, the highlands and they returned to their homeland, and Hikaru and Shizuka were separated. With their new weapons, the Duchy of Artesia was no match for Karun Rub. Hikaru fled south toward Redmond, and then further south into the Jin Empire, seeking refuge with a disgruntled band of murlocs associated with Joan. They too were scattered. By this time, both Hikaru and Shizuka separately made their way to Your Excellency's Great Empire. Here, Hikaru threw his lot with the traitor Count Zul and fled back north towards Azorbia. Shizuka joined forces with General Yue Fang to face the new threat. Hikaru stole the ancestral sword of the first Jin Emperor and headed towards Azorbia with Count Zul. Yue Fang pursued but was stopped by the approaching Nerubians. After many skirmishes, your great empire entered an alliance with Karon Nerub. Previously, Hikaru's traveling companion, Necro of the Darkslayer, parted ways with the Wanderer. Remaining in Arcadia for a short time, he received news that his services were required in the north. There, the Zande and Seder were engaged, were engaged in a brutal war. The Cult of the Black Moon gained great support in the Northland. Backing the power of Karun Nerub and Arcadia in the past, and now Your Excellency's Great Empire, they seek to bring a new order. Lastly, the priestess Shizuka parted ways with General Yue Fang, traveling to the Ji Highlands to commission the Dwarven Engineers in the construction of the first of many airships, utilizing design plants used by Arcadia and now Karon Nerub. She planned to travel to the Black Moon Temple when a new enemy, the Dragon Slayers, emerged from the darkness. These shadowy forces have long since stalked her and now openly attack. Your humble servant has recounted this tale in brief and sincerely hopes to complete this volume to Your Excellency's satisfaction. The accounts which the sorcery and tales take diverges greatly from this point forward. Your humble servant will attempt to take into account all possibilities. Our great emperor can decide for himself. Some say he is a wielder of flames, wielding the sword guaranteed in holy fires. Others speak of a great sorcerer who manipulates fire. Oh, that's why I shouldn't skip intros. <laughs> okay, okay, I always skip them and... <clears throat> don't mind me. So I can pick Flame Knight, Flame Sorcerer or Sorcerian. I have used Sorcerian. He has divine shield and uh, whatever. It's not. It doesn't seem quite good. Okay, so I can pick flame knight. That's probably melee. Flame sorcerer. That's ranged and sorcery. Uh, I mean, he cannot heal himself as any of these three classes. That's probably certain. So, question is, do I want ranged or melee? Uh, let's try ranged. Some tell of a woman who slays demons. Some tell of a woman who adorns herself with snakes. Some say she's a priestess of death. Priestess of death? Hmm. I mean, the demon hunter Shizuka is really, really, really strong. 
But what would it be if I hadn't tried a different class, right? I, I guess I'll try Priestess. She's a known assassin, laying traps for her enemies, or using summon beasts for her dirty work. And an expert marksman. So assassin, a trapper, or a gunner. Summoner has proven to be really useful. It may... The summoner class made encounter with Garm, the sniper, really, really easy. But what if I try Gunner? These are the key figures in this tale. Their paths destined to cross many times, working toward the same goal, whether it be for good or ill. This unworthy scholar submits this to your eminence's review. So I guess I'm not gonna skip any any cinematics from now on. I mean, any book intros, right? Right. 